Making history, Donald Trump becomes the first sitting U.S. president to set foot in the DPRK. Plus, no new tariffs, as China and the United States agree to resume trade talks. Hello, I'm Mike Walter, sitting in for Anand Naidu, and this is The Heat. It was quite the weekend in Asia. First in Osaka, Japan, where U.S. President Donald Trump and Chinese President Xi Jinping met on the sidelines of the G20 summit. The two leaders agreed to put additional tariffs on hold for now and resume negotiations over a potential trade deal. Then to the DMZ, where President Trump crossed into the Democratic People's Republic of Korea, jump-starting dormant nuclear talks between the two countries. For more, let's turn to CGTN's Toby Muse. He's in our newsroom. Toby, first, uh, the trade talks. What was discussed and decided between these two leaders? Well, the best way of describing the outcome of the talks is that it's a temporary ceasefire in the trade conflict, a commitment by both sides to return to the negotiating table and a cooling off of recent rhetoric. Trump pledged to hold off slapping tariffs on an additional $300 billion worth of Chinese goods. China agreed to purchase more U.S. agricultural products. Trump also said that U.S. companies will be allowed to sell some parts to Huawei, the Chinese telecommunications giant. The U.S. placed the company on a blacklist earlier this year as a so-called threat to U.S. security. The company will remain on the blacklist until the trade talks are concluded. Both sides seemed happy by the talks. Here's what Chinese President Xi Jinping had to say. Enormous change has taken place in the international situation and China-U.S. ties. But one basic fact remains unchanged. China and the United States both benefit from cooperation and lose in a confrontation. Cooperation and dialogue are better than friction and confrontation. Now, while there were warm words and smiles, the fact is tariffs are still on hundreds of billions of dollars of goods, traveling in both directions. That causes uncertainty, with, so far, no clear path forward. Mike? Now to the DMZ, where President Trump stepped into history. How did this all come about, and what does it mean for these stalled nuclear talks? Well, the first U.S. president to step foot into the DPRK, a historic moment, organized at the last moment after, what else? A tweet by Donald Trump. Trump had said earlier on Twitter that he would like to see Kim Jong-un, and both countries worked furiously to make it happen. In their meeting, Trump invited the DPRK leader to visit Washington. Nothing certain yet. But after the scenes of cheerful chaos, it's not entirely clear what was achieved. Yes, talks between the two countries will restart. But let's remember that talks fizzled out in February in Vietnam as the two countries wrestled with a problem that has yet to be resolved. The word denuclearization appears to mean something different to each side. The U.S. has wanted it to mean the riddance of all nuclear weapons. The DPRK is said to see it as something substantially less. Today, the New York Times is reporting that the U.S. might be open to a freeze, the DPRK keeping its arsenal but with a commitment not to add to it. Now, this would be a controversial approach because this would essentially recognize the DPRK as a nuclear power. Back to you, Mike. Thanks so much, Toby. 